graffiti and art is beautiful, but writing on, you know, public spaces that you don't own is illegal. That struggle is actually what makes the game better, I think. It's a very indie kind of vibe, like the ind independent, almost independent film vibe, the way that it's been produced. I've been an outsider in everything I've done. I've had the good fortune of having, uh, you know, of having some success in, in my core business and in fashion. I've had some pretty good success, respectable success in publishing. But, you know, coming in as an outsider into the gaming world uh, is definitely you, you're faced with a lot of cynics. You know, when people ask, what are you proud of about this game? It's really just the fact that I was able to get it made. In its early uh, uh, inception, I was conceiving it uh, potentially an animated something. And it was at a moment in my business when I was over seven million dollars in debt. I remember on the Friday being in my office and excusing all of my staff to leave um, at around 3 p.m. because the lights went out in the building and it was because the cable truck hit the uh, uh, cables or whatever, which was a lie. We didn't pay for electric bills. So I had to turn my business around. I put the uh, this script and this stack of papers about the Ojai uh, of characters and environments, just put it on ice. When I started pitching this thing, it was at a time when games that had this kind of a narrative thread or, or had a urban label on them really were, hadn't existed. Literally for a year before I got involved, it was just this sort of mysterious uh, project. It was called Project Rhapsody at the time. Contrary to popular opinion, it wasn't like from my personal experiences or anything. A, a lot more from my fantasy of what the experiences would be like. My background is in comics, and the idea of making a Gotham, or what I felt could be, you know, the new take on Gotham City, was very exciting to me. He really had a strong vision for what he felt New Radius was all about. Once he sold me that vision, I was 100% on board. As soon as I heard it has to deal with graffiti, I was like, I gotta get on that. It was really that willingness to sort of step into the dark with us and try something different. We're gonna take the risk of, of building this product um, with the potential upside of it building a fan base and you know potentially working. And, um, and we're gonna do it in a way where it's gonna be painful. I hope getting up just encourages more developers to open their minds to a, a new way of developing video games. If you said to a, a, the, the average development team, the average video game company, go make a Star Trek game, go make a Dungeons and Dragons game, nine out of 10 developers will know how to do that. The guys that are building games are just culturally into those, those intellectual properties. It's not like, okay, we're gonna take this formula and we're gonna execute this game. It's like, okay, we're gonna take this idea or this, this uh, culture, and we're gonna try to find a game for this culture, which is a totally different way to work. It was good, I mean, again, it was just this, this whole new world that, that we hadn't been exposed to. Mark was always challenging us to, to uh, throw away our video game uh, ideas and cultures, things that we'd always relied upon. Developers know memory constraints, we know, you know, how long it's gonna take to do something, so, you know, when he came in, it's like, uh, yeah, we want freeform, we want to put up stickers and posters and, and stencils and markers. We're like, dang, that's a lot of stuff. Finding that tension between, like, great gameplay and something that's culturally respectful is, you know, that's, that's a balancing act. It started off as a much more fantastic sort of stylized story, stylized characters. A lot of, uh, of what I had to deal with was arm wrestling stereotypes and kind of arm wrestling and being overly cartoonish. We started off with a cell shaded look and we were trying to play with some kind of stylistic kind of feel and it was kind of cool just to experiment with that but I guess we were way off base in, in that regard. It was much more of a science fiction kind of a route. Uh, in fact, Train at one time had wings, uh, sort of a little known fact. Real funky walks and, and exaggerated posing. Wide leg pants or something and like overly big feet, overly hulking body proportions or something. In fact, I wanted to make him kind of scrawny. 
oh yeah, it's gonna have a heavy hip hop influence. There's gonna be a lot of music involved. And somehow we got on this tangent of, you know, a, a music game, it's sort of a, uh, not necessarily DDR, but there might be rhythms involved in putting graffiti up on the wall and hitting buttons and so forth. So it was almost like a dancing game. And one time Train spun in the air and did a 360 and like fire followed his feet. Bending the character backwards, doing 360 flips. I mean, it was, it was much more acrobatic. I remember this one idea we had where he had a spray can, you would jump off a building and you would use it you know, to kind of slow down your, your, your fall. And that was a little, you know, kind of out there. You know, I didn't want to be on some like 80s b-boy, like purely throwback. I wanted to feel contemporary. So like I, uh, when they proposed, you know, an opening cinematic at a DJ battle with breakdancers, I kind of... It wasn't really what Mark was going for. You didn't need to have like train in the club breaking and then running outside and painting. I remember that first interview, uh, first uh, phone conference with Mark and he's like, well guys, I don't think you're quite getting it here. You know, it's more about the culture and the graffiti and what it means to be a, a graffiti artist and live in an urban city. And we came up with something that was a little more fluid that felt more real. We've gone through a lot of iterations just to get the graffiti feeling good. We had some weird thing where the arm would move all funny. We did something crazy like that, but it didn't work. And now you can actually just spray paint and it feels smooth and it feels natural. You see the mist come out and there's an underspray element to it. And then eventually you fill the piece in and then you get the flourish when it's all done. We have this kind of urban gritty world and people can relate to that more rather than kind of this cartoony facade. There's this whole element of, of exposing, really fast tracking the history of graffiti. So you, you learn how graffiti starts. You get to meet these legends, these real graffiti artists in the game. Graffiti art was a huge part of the culture of hip hop and the culture of New York City. Mark as, as, as an artist and as a businessman has done a good job of, um, of making sure that it stays true to the culture. And there are actual graffiti legends like Coke 2 and Futura who are in the game. What Mark has done is by signing up 50 graffiti artists plus the six legends, is he sort of instantly brought a certain authenticity to the game. Different people play different capacities. Some people just lent their art. Some people lent their voiceovers. You know, these are guys that, that Mark knows and that he brings to the game and that we meet in the game, guys like Seen, guys like Shepard Ferry, you know, who sort of rewrote the art of propaganda, guys like T-Kid who, you know, teach our character, Train, how to do wild style. Damn, T-Kid, this is all you? What up, son? I mean, they're likenesses, they lend their voices, and so it lends an authenticity to this project that's unparalleled. Mark came down to the idea of getting this artist named Sub to do all of Train's graffiti. I went through Sub on the advice of my lead artist, Mike Evans. I'm pretty much doing everything from when he's a toy all the way to when he's a legend. <laughs> so generally all of Train. You know, he understood automatically his own understanding and knowledge of you know, the, the come up from toy to like, you know, aspiring to be a legend. Actors have to get into a character. As corny as that kind of sounds, as a, like in a graffiti world, you kind of have to do that because I had to, you kind of have to backtrack back to the idea of him being a toy. He knew to think that way. He was asking those questions. He knew that the art acted as a character. When you're in Newport Beach, California, where they are, and these guys never came to New York their whole lives. I made sure they get on the underground. I took them on helicopter ride around the city. Yeah, we're not going to the Statue of Liberty and and the Brooklyn Bridge. I mean, if we're seeing the bridge, we're seeing the underside of the bridge. To the normal tourist or anybody that lives in New York probably has never gone down there. And you probably shouldn't. And we would actually have to go on the wall so the trains would pass us. Doing a, a tag on the wall in Times Square, 100 feet from a cop, you get the, the rush and the thrill and you start to understand, yeah, there's a game here. Not only the underbelly, but we also looked at the rooftops, which is another, you know, uh, area of the city that you know, a lot of people don't think about. There's a whole another layer to the city that exists on the rooftops, a whole other topology. Looking at all the structures and kind of all the verticality, you know, as a level designer, I would look at that and say, you know what, we could probably build levels that go as high. We started clicking into the culture. It gave me my first sort of experience of what I, th what I thought this game could be. The style of train came from a combination of a lot of things, basketball footage, NBA players. Like we started off with this um, idea for a fighting style inspired by basketball called Dunk Fu. 
Dung Fu being that he fought like a basketball player would, would play basketball. So there were you know, moves where you'd grab somebody and pick them up and throw them down on the ground like you were slamming a ball into a rim. Train is all basketball with a little bit of hot sauce on the side. We wanted to keep him a people's man. The main bad guys in our game have guns, and we didn't want to portray him that he's a lethal weapon style dude. So most of his weapons are blunt to keep down the, the brutality of the entire thing. He does amazing things, but they're all things you can imagine doing yourself. You can imagine climbing a pipe. You can imagine shimming on a ledge. You can imagine uh, rappelling off of a rope. Things that in our world you know, seem pretty fantastical, real graffiti artists are actually doing this. Yeah! My bad, dog. Hey, hey, you trying to kill me. I used to always talk to uh, Talib Kweli you know, at different events, if I'd see him out or if I'd see him at Echo events or whatever, you just listen to his vo his talking voice. I find it to be a really cool, distinctive voice that you could really build something around. Vandal Squad, Graph Writer's worst enemy. Tell me they ain't go over my shit. You know, I'm a real New York City kid. I've had a real New York-centric experience. And, um, you know, I don't know what Mark saw in me, but I know that there's aspects of his character um, that relate to how I grew up. Uh, you know, trains take on authority. Oh, damn, here comes the heat. Vandal Squad, shit. Surprise, surprise. Ain't y'all got some donuts to chase down or something? I think it works for the character. And I think it was interesting for him, because I didn't. I don't think he realized how much of acting was going to be involved. The subway underground. It's a writer's natural home. Dark, dangerous. You know, my first experience with Echo was buying his T-shirts with his graffiti on them. I sort of paid homage to the culture back then. So I had a feeling that they would get it right this time too. See ya. The main purpose of bringing RJD2 into the, this project was just because his sound was perfect for it. It's hip hop, but he's a, he allows himself to stretch and try new things. And there's something very musical about it. He broke the traditional conventions of every four bars being the same thing looped over and over and over again. Doing this project has me analyzing music in video games differently. You can't just write six minute pieces of music for every section of the game. If the music's too symmetrical and too much where you could just go like this, you know, 10 hours of this is, you know, it's dope when you're just listening to a headphone, but when you're trying to make it an emotional situational score, it doesn't work. You recognize it, your brain recognizes it as a loop, and that's not a good thing in the gameplay. What you really want is something that loops, that's seamless. Revive, rebuild. Re, not so new anymore, as it appears that once again graffiti writers have beat the system. From the voice talent to the music talent, we're able to really tap into some of the popular icons in, in entertainment right now. Brittany Murphy, who's gonna play uh, Karen Light, and Rosaria Dawson, who's playing Tina. And now Aunt Beth will be immortalized by the lovely Andy Dick. Fashion culture is very elite, okay? Some of the most elitist pricks I've ever met, met have been wearing like $5,000 helmet lang suits. But there's, you know, I learned fast that gaming nerds, like hardcore game nerds, they, they have an opinion and they are hell bent in letting you know and communicating. And I respect that about gaming, gaming community. You know, that's a part of the challenge I signed up for when I, when I wanted to get involved in this. I knew I had thick enough skin to deal with it. You can never control the haters. There's always gonna be haters or cynics. But I would just say to the haters that I'm making it, bitch. I remember I must have been in fifth grade or something like that. My father and my family were driving to um, to visit a cousin in Trenton, New Jersey. And there were all these freight cars bombed with graffiti. I commented on it. My dad picked up a book called Subway Art he brought home for me. I remember falling in love and being enamored with these, these full top to bottom cars done by Dondi and seen images of Futura, you know, holding himself up, you know, uh, between cars. So uh, that's what, how I got into it. I fell in love with it. And, you know, graffiti is, as a medium, is, you know, probably one of the most co-opted art you know, phenomenons of the last, you know, 30 or 40 years. Getting up is uh, sort of a synthesis of 100% sort of urban culture, like getting the idea of what it is to be a graffiti artist with a fast and fun uh, gameplay style. Yeah, meet the city's new ad agency. Getting up is really about the birth of an artist. 
the birth of an artist and the evolution of an artist. Uh, you play a kid named Train growing up in the mean streets of New Radius. New Radius is uh, like New York City, set maybe 15 minutes in the future. And this is the city where Train learns his art and his craft. And his art and craft is graffiti. So you as the character in the game go through the evolution of what it's like to be a graffiti artist. So you'll start as a toy, you learn how to write your name in creative ways. You learn other types of graffiti, like you go from doing a throw up on the wall, to doing a burner, to doing a mural, uh, to learning about roll ups with long roller sticks, uh, to do wheat pastes and start doing posters and stencils and, and all these things that make you a legend. So Mark was able to uh, you know, not only get 60 graffiti arts in the game, six of them are actual, uh, their, their likenesses are actually in the title, and we meet them throughout the course of the game. As Train's evolving as a graffiti artist, these legends sort of serve to train him on different skills and techniques that will help him improve his, his, his look. Mark Echo lives in New York City, so obviously that was a big uh, part of our influence. We spent a lot of time on research trips, going to New York, really studying it, getting a lot of photographs. But in addition to New York, he was pushing some uh, exotic locations, and one of them was Kowloon, China, and it's since been destroyed. But it was this um, it was this ghetto of sorts that was tiered structures and very scary and creepy and, and almost like the unlivable conditions. In addition to that, we wanted to push the world to this vertical height, so uh, we, we would take New York City and and say, well, what if it was even, you know, instead of nine stories above for an elevated train, what if it was 20 stories above? So we're truly trying to push this verticality in the game. One of the unique ways that we get around in getting up is this thing called buildering, which is a way that a graffiti artist might move up the side of a building, but I'm actually using the environment to my advantage. And it might be a, a combination of jumping or climbing or moving up the side of a chain link fence to get to a pole that I could shimmy across. These are the ways that the player uses his environment to navigate through and getting up. I just wanted a composite character that just was not typical. How would an action hero look like? Does he have to be hulking? Does he, you know, especially urban, an urban action hero, does he need to have wide leg pants and big shoes? You know, I wanted somebody who was scrawny, that was kind of like the everyman. Is he black, is he white, is he Latino, is he Asian? It's kind of the point of trying to come to this character that, you know, broke with conventional wisdom. One of our voices that I think will steal the show is Andy Dick as the voice of the Vandal Squad boss, Aunt Beth. Talib Kweli, uh, as you know, is Train. Vandal Squad, surprise, surprise. Ain't y'all got some donuts to chase down or something? And has lent an authenticity and a feel to that character, and he has really nailed the character of Train. We approach the music in the game as if it were a film score. You know, picking the right music to suit the right mood at the right time. Uh, we have a uh, hip-hop artist, uh, RJD2, who's been creating music for us, and um, interactive music at that, and that the player will have a certain ambient track that will happen in a situation, whether it's a sneak mode or a graffiti piece, and once you then get into another situation, you might be victorious because you put up some graffiti, or you might get caught by a rival crew and start a, and start a fight. The music will interactively shift to then sit, suit the mood of that moment. To a graffiti artist, their life's blood is a black book. This is where they keep their notes, their sketches, all the ideas that they have for the different graffiti that they can do. They practice writing their name to come up with more style. And we have a black book that looks very similar to that in Getting Up. So as the player unlocks new types of, of graffiti and learns new styles and discipline, they all get collected sort of as this inventory system in the black book. One of the good things about working with Mark Echo is that he's an outsider. He was able to come in and look at the video game industry and say, you know, there's, there's different ways of doing things. And we specifically worked with him to not be cliche. In fact, as we said, if it's cliche, throw it away. I think when people get their hands on this game and start playing it, the thing that's really going to stick out is the vision, uh, the fact that we're creating a world that's, you know, true to, to Mark's vision, and it's true to um, a vision of graffiti as an art form in a way that's never been seen before. I hope the gaming community looks at what we've done and, and they see something special. I mean, it's an experiment. We, we, um, worked with someone outside the industry uh, that really had a passion for games but no experience making them and at the end of the day we came up with something unique. I hope what people will say about this game is they haven't seen anything like it before. That was certainly my intent 
And my hopes in doing that is that hopefully more outsiders, more guys that don't know code, are in fact invited to the dance.